I'm Lori and today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint a miniature painting. Here's my reference photo. It is of a reflective seascape in a place called Sargent's Bay. These are the brushes I'll be using. The first is a flathead wide brush, then that one's a filbert brush, and then two liner brushes, one especially small liner brush. I'll be starting with the sky color, which is mostly titanium white mixed with a tiny little bit of phthalo blue red shade and just get the canvas covered generally in the sky area as well as on the reflective pond area. Here I'm adding with just a little bit more detail, a little bit darker color, showing the clouds in the sky with a darker blue as well as a cyan color blue. The cyan color is mixed with phthalo turquoise, just a touch of it with the phthalo blue and the titanium white. And here I'm adding more white to it to give more detail to the clouds in the sky. Here I'll be mixing my darkest color, which is made of charcoal black and hooker's green. Hooker's green is a really, really dark green. I'll block in the mountain and the treescape and the foreground with this dark green color. Being careful not to paint too much, leaving some of the background showing through. Touching the canvas very, very lightly with the paint. Painting around the edges. Using the shape of the brush to Help me to make those trees. This is a miniature flat knife edge brush that I didn't show you at the beginning. I found it to be very helpful in this miniature painting. I'm looking at my reference photo a lot and just um, seeing the proportions of the mountain and, and the trees and just trying to keep those proportions very similar to the original reference photo. And I'm dragging up the stem of the tree, that same dark green color. The liner brush is the best brush for really, really fine detail. Like these two little trees that are on the top of these little bits of this mountain. That's a really fine detail liner brush. It's really easy to overpaint small details which I end up doing here. And you can just dip into some of the sky color and 
put in some sky holes when you need to. Now just putting a few more vertical trunks in. And then I'll move into doing the mountain reflections, and the forest, the tree reflections on the water with that same color that the mountain was made with, which is the charcoal black and the hooker's green. And just try to do a mirror image of what's going on above the surface making sure to paint right around the edges so that this little canvas will be a finished piece that can just sit on a miniature easel and be a nice finished piece of art. Just doing the mirror image on the forest side The water has a bit of movement on that side, so it's a bit squiggly, just like in my reference photo. And now here's a reflection of the taller trees. The water's fairly still, but it's interesting what the reflection looks like on the still water. I'm just taking all my cues from that reference photo, looking back and forth at it. It's amazing how much it, it already looks like a painting when all I've done is the background and blocked in with, with a singular color so far, but I'm going to add lots of highlights and some grasses to make it look really real. I noticed some detail in the clouds that weren't dark enough so I took this time to to put in a little bit of that information I'm trying not to overpaint really easy to do that when I looked at the reference photo I noticed the cloud wasn't a perfect mirror image. This filbert brush would come in handy right, right now. It's got some really rounded edges, so it helps to blend clouds and water reflection. So I'm pressing quite hard to try to get some of that dry paint to feather out really nicely. There's some interesting little marks on the water, showing little ripples using my finest detail brush to put a few of those in, not too many. The paper towel is so necessary to control how much paint you have on your brush. Using the filbert brush again to, to blend and feather out the paint.
a lot more detail showing on that reference photo that I haven't put in yet. I'm adding in some of the yellow tones into the sky that kind of got lost. A lot of times near the horizon, the sky color turns from a blue color to more of a yellowy color, a very faint yellowy color. So I'm just putting in some of that information, some of that detail before I move on. And of course that some of that reflective color needs to be on the the water too. And I'm lightening it even more with some white. Lighter colors need to be on last, which is what I'm doing here on the surface of the water. Painting what I see in the reference photo. Kind of overdoing it. It's easy to overdo it. Sometimes it's best just to, to leave it. Finish my edge. I'm finally going to add some mid tones in the forest and in the foreground. Just need some little touches to show that there's foliage, to show that there's grasses, to show that there's rocks and moss. I'm using a, a super gentle touch and it's even putting on more paint than I would like. I'm going to try and change the colors slightly. There's some rust colors, there's some moss colors some grass colors. There's not a lot of paint on that brush, just a little bit. Now I'm going to put some of the the grasses that are in the foreground and this color is um, A yellow shade, a yellow orange shade, kind of signifying the dry grasses. I created this color with a uh, quinacridone azo gold, and now I'm 
Now I'm actually moving um, into some dark greens again, mixing it up a little, having some of the dark green colors as well as the quinacridone azo gold color. They're kind of marshy grasses. It's really important to start at the bottom and pull up to the top of the grass so that it comes to a point. Just try to have many, many very, very thin bits of grass. Sometimes you can't even see the bottom of the grass. All you see is that last point. And then I'm just trying to fill it in a little bit. I'm trying to do it quickly so I don't have uh, the lines too thick. Sometimes if you do a quick light stroke, they'll be thinner. Now I'm just adding some leaves. This is mostly chromium oxide green. And instead of um, having nice long linear lines, I'm just doing little splotches, almost horizontal little splotches, some diagonal. And then I lightened it a little bit with some white and some yellow. Now putting some highlights in the grasses in the distance. And using that same color to highlight the foreground. It's good to have a little bit of the, the same color in different parts of the painting. So I'm just looking for, in the reference photo, wherever I see strokes of that color. And I'm just wandering, meandering all over the painting, wherever I see that color, that highlight tone. I noticed there are some, some more deeper orange colors, so now I'm just adding some of that information, that detail in. Quite a dark color. I don't want to cover up too much, so I'm trying not to overdo it. Just a few little strokes here and there. Some linear, some kind of blocky shapes as well. This is the part where you're painting actually quite abstractly. Just abstract shapes, nothing too... Nothing too um, detailed or... I'm not trying to actually paint grass, I'm just painting colors and lines in the right spots. <laughs> I'm getting really close to being finished now. There's enough information in the in the painting for your eye to to fill in the things that I haven't painted yet. There really isn't as much detail in this painting as there is in the reference photo, but it's already enough. It's definitely giving the impression of grass in the front and a reflection on the water. Some beautiful clouds in the background. So I think I'm going to stop there and call it done. Congratulations for making it to the end of this miniature painting video. For more painting technique videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please.